What do we do with the toxic waste we already have? Especially the most toxic waste of all. Let's talk about the current problem. We've got over 50,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel stored on over 100 sites across the United States. Nuclear power may produce no greenhouse gases, but it does leave a terrible problem behind. Barrels like these are filled with spent fuel from reactors that will remain radioactive for the next 10,000 years. And it's piling up. So going back all the way to the 1950s, there was some seminal studies, one by the National Academy of Science in the US, that's looked at various options for dealing with this radioactive waste. Shooting it into space, deep sea burial, burial in glaciers, and burial in various kinds of geologic settings. The current plan? Bury it in Yucca Mountain, a radioactive waste depository currently being constructed in Nevada that won't be ready until 2017 and, at the rate we're going, will be filled before it even opens. A problem that one little government lab has been working on since nuclear science was invented. But this is today's Argonne National Laboratory, where, among other peaceful nuclear applications, world-class scientists are working to solve the world's worst waste problem. My name is Monica Vergobito, and today with my team from Argonne, we are doing the impossible. We are recycling nuclear waste. Monica and her team of scientists are developing nuclear waste recycling technology. If successful, it could reduce the radioactive waste generated by nuclear power plants by 90%. What goes into a nuclear power plant is a fuel rod that has uranium oxide inside of a stainless steel tube. That goes into a reactor. The uranium actually fissions or breaks apart, produces energy, heat, which actually drives a turbine and makes, makes electricity. But once only 5% of the uranium has reacted, the entire fuel rod becomes too contaminated with other elements generated in the process and must be disposed of. It becomes what we term spent nuclear fuel. It's no longer efficient at making electricity, so it's then treated as waste. This very valuable uranium oxide is now contaminated with plutonium, americium, curium, and the fission products. Pretty much the rest of the periodic table leaving a dangerous radioactive cocktail. Monica and her team are working to extract the usable elements for energy production. So we have extraction, we have the scrub, we have a strip, and we have a wash. The goal of this technology is to efficiently close the nuclear fuel cycle. Simple, in theory. The processes are what we call solvent extraction processes. For example, Italian dressing, where you have oil and water mixed together, you shake them, for example, and then the phases will separate. Instead of oil and water, this process uses spent fuel rods and acid. Behind this completely airtight, lead-shielded glass is a very complex set of chemical experiments using specially designed machines called mixer settlers. These devices are designed with multiple stages of mixing and separating to extract the elements from the radioactive soup. The process is then sped up with the device Argon invented called the centrifugal contactor. So we can do the mixing and the separation of the two phases in one to three seconds. We're very proud that in the last six years, we have developed what we call advanced recycling technologies. Except that here, you have to use robots and glove boxes to do it. This is a dangerous recycle. Solving nuclear waste problems is not something easy or trivial or something that you have people volunteer to do. But it's of tantamount importance, which is why Monica and her team do volunteer to do it. You can't leave this in temporary storage uh, waiting future generations to, to bring solutions to bear. I do not want my grandchildren to have to face the problem of dealing with this radioactive waste in the future. <laughs>